Hey there all, my name is Danny Till and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are painting a mandarin duck. On the screen, flashing away, are the items that I've used in today's tutorial. If you don't have them, that's fine. You can substitute with your paint and your paint brushes. Now to start off with, I'm going to take my larger brush, which is the size 20. I have clean water and I'm going to start with this section here of the duck and I'm going to be using a salt with this to texture it. Now the actual belly of the duck or the wing of the duck, um, the belly is white, but the wing of the duck is sort of like a yellowy, browny, orangey color. So what I want to do is I want to come in with my clean water and just drop the water into this section of the wing. So it's a large portion of the drawing. It is the bit that's going to catch your eye because it is in the center of the painting itself. And all I'm doing here now is I'm dropping in the color, oh, sorry, my apologies, the water. And I'm really wetting this section here. I want it very, very wet so that I can drop color in. And the cold press paper will take that. Now I'm just angling myself down to see the shimmer of the water, the gloss of the water on your paper. Now you want enough shimmer and shine on this, but you don't want your water to be puddling. So take your time and pop in the water nice and even, evenly and within the lines. Watercolour will only travel where you have water. So that's something very important to remember. You don't um, have to freak out about anything else around your painting at the moment, apart from what we're working on now. Again, just a little bit more water. And I'm just popping that in. And when you're happy with the amount of water that you have, again, not puddled and within the lines, we're going to start dropping a little bit of the yellows in. Now these are warmer yellows on this palette and all I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the color on the tip of my brush. This gives me a really nice point even though it's a big brush it's still going to allow for me to get into these little crevices. So in with the warmer yellow and straight in and it will disperse and follow through with the water and I'm just outlining this section with the yellow and dropping in the color. I'm not watering down the color from the palette itself. And I'm just dragging that color into this wing. Just all the way around like so. And as you can see, the tip of my brush here is right at the tip of where the line is of the wing itself. And therefore, I know that I'm not going to go over. And then just follow through. I'm getting a little bit darker with my color. And I'll do the same in here, just getting a little bit darker. picking it straight up off the palette. The paper's wet. And I haven't really focused on the yellow in the center yet. I wanna keep that a little bit lighter. So to do so, I'm just gonna clean my brush out, blot it out on my paper towel. And the blotting action that I'm using is just a sort of a left right motion just to clean the brush off. And when you've got a nice clean brush, semi dry, I'm just going to lead, lead the color down into the center. And that'll give you a nice blended smooth finish as well. Now, this is where I'm going to come in and take a little, of, a little bit of an almost sepia color. I'm going to drop that into the corner. So my paper's wet and I'm trying to darken the values. 
without losing the vibrancy of the yellow. So I'm just dropping these in. There is a lot of detail on this particular wing. So instead of doing the detail, this is where the salt will come in to give us a little bit of texture. So just dropping that color in. Just down the bottom of the yellow bit. So a yellow and a sepia will work here. And I really want that intense, so I'm just dropping it in and letting it merge and mingle through. Just enhancing those values. And just down here, it's going to get a little bit darker. And to make that darker, I'm just going to add in the tiniest little bit of blue. Just a little bit of blue and let that merge and mingle through and that's going to mix with this sepia colour. And With my larger cleaner brush just come in and drag that colour around and give it some shape. Now with that done I'm going to come in with my salt. Now there's enough colour on this paper it's glistening it's even starting to to buckle with how much water i've got i'm just going to take the salt and disperse it onto the paper i'm going to get these details done straight away so in with the salt i'm going to let the salt absorb the color and the excess water that's on our page. So I want it to be a bit of a design within the duck and giving you a point of interest. I'm gonna now dry this off and I'll come back with the dried area and we can start working on a different section of the duck. Now I've dried this off with a hairdryer. Normally I would let it dry naturally and it's a lot, um, I think the results are a little bit better when you do so, but it's been dried off with a hairdryer and all I'm doing now is just using my finger to just move the salt. And then I've just got a little waste bin next to me and I'm just going to remove and take away the salt. And it's allowed for some texture. Again, if it was naturally dried, you'd get a better finish. And as you can see, it's given us a little bit of texture here and we're not going to have to work on the feather work as much and it's still going to be a point of interest in our painting. So for the next section, I'd like to dip in and do the orange. So I'm going to use my size six brush here, clean water. And we're just going to drop the water in again and outline where the orange is going to go. A bigger brush might work better um, for coverage if that's what you've got. Now I'm working the lighter colours first within this painting and then I'm going to come in with the darker ones. So if I do want to sort of fix something that I'm not happy with or want to go over it, it's a lot easier to go over with a darker watercolour than a lighter one. So just dropping that colour in. Again, my paper's wet, I don't have any puddles. And at the end of this particular feather, it's white. And then we've got a little bit of orange, almost like a half moon shape behind that. Just working on the bits that I'm going to do that are orange and then I'm going to come in with this very very vibrant orange that Mikador has and I'm just activating that by placing some water into the palette itself and the color and straight in and we're dropping this in and I want to make it interesting so I'm going to drop it in and let it sort of do its own thing the pigment again is very very strong and as you can see the water is only got um, the color is only going where there is water 
So I'm going to use my brush to move it around, soften some areas. Like so. And then if there's areas that you're not liking, and I do declare paper towel is your friend when you do use watercolours, just pick up some of that pigment and water just to take away that colour and then just come in with a little bit more orange in that top area and bottom area. And what I want um, to happen here is I just want it to disperse out and leave highlights within the painting. And again, I will dry this off and I will come back with the dried area and we'll start working on the next half of the Mandarin Duck. Now that's been dried off, um, still a little bit damp. The paper has bubbled a little bit because the area where the water is, it's got nowhere to escape because the area around it is dry. So the only place it's got to go is up. So that's why your paper tends to buckle when there is more water than it can handle. But in saying that, I take my paintings and I place them between a couple of sheets of just some cheaper watercolor paper or a pad and weight it down and it just flattens out. So there's no real worry there. If you are doing details, flatten out your piece and come back to it. Alternatively, you can stretch it, but I don't stretch any of my artwork. So just did with the orange again, just an area here behind the feather that we did. Super bright, vibrant orange in this Mikador set. And all I want to do is I want to come in and layer it a little bit. So just a little bit more colour. And this will change the values but it also give you some dimension so ideally normally I would paint this whole whole painting and then come in with another layer and another layer but because this duck itself is almost like a jigsaw puzzle we can work on different bits and use different techniques dry it off and then continue and work on another section so that's how I'm painting this particular one normally it may not be the case Okay, so again, just to darken the values, I'm using the same color. I'm not using anything else, and I'm just giving it another layer. And the values are just darker down the bottom and just up the top here. So I'm starting to shape, shape the duck already. Just cleaning this out. and drying it off and I'll be back with that dried section again. Now my two sections are fairly dry so they won't smudge as I keep on doing the rest of the painting. What I want to do now is I want to flip the artwork a little bit to make it easier for me to work with. So don't be afraid to move your paper as you paint. Now I'm going to move a few of these colors out of the way because I'm not currently using them and dust off a little bit of this salt. Now within this palette there are some beautiful greens um, and sepia colors and an olive color so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on the feathers underneath his beak or her beak and to make it easier for myself I'm going to turn and tilt the paper and then I'm going to come in with a size 6 clean brush get my point up I just do that on the paper towel and the technique whether it is or isn't a technique I've got the wet brush I place the brush down on the paper towel and give it a twirl and move it towards myself and see the tip is is becoming a lot more pointy and I'm going to have a little bit more direction when I'm painting. So in with the water into the color that I'm using which is more of the sepia color and all I'm going to do now is in the drawing you'll see these like little almost like very very thin petals and what we're going to do is the feather work. And in turn, 
I'm just going to use the tip of my brush and just fill in those areas, moving it up. The paper's dry and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see that. And all I'm doing right now is laying in that colour. Just roughly, you want to leave a few areas white, that's fine. Just going to turn the paper around again and start flicking out these feathers. Remember, leave some areas white, leave a bit of gap in between that, and again. If you can also use your brush this way where you're putting the point down at the start or the bottom and flicking upwards. So you can do it that way as well. So just flicking actions in this section, nothing too hard. And later on we'll come in, we'll darken some of the values which will make some of these little feathers pop out. You can go over the lines with this and make it a little bit artistically yours, if that makes sense. And that's just another layer. Now, instead of drying that off, I'm just going to leave it to dry naturally and I'm going to start working on this back end here. So if I move the paper here, you can see a little bit better. And I need a, a greeny brown colour. So I'm just going to go into the palette here. Now, within this one, there is a green. It's a darker emerald green, and I'm just going to go straight in with that. Now I've got a little bit of water on my brush. So the paint is a little bit more diluted and it's a lot lighter. Flicking out these edges here because they're not a per it's a feather so they're not perfect just picking up a little bit more paint which is going to make it a little bit darker and I'm using a flicking action the outer area around some of this is darker so just putting in more pigment and letting it dance around the paper there so there's a few feathers and all I'm doing is just popping in that green colour first of all. It goes a little bit darker and then a little bit lighter. I'll just play through that. And then just add a little bit of water and jiggle that water in that hollow area. And what I want to do is I really want to create some blooms in there. Let's just let it mingle and merge for a little bit. I haven't gone too dark going to let that run for a sec and then to make it a little bit more interesting while I've got my green here I'm just going to do a splatter like so and I'm splattering the color the same color that I'm using just picking up any that's splattered where I don't want it to so I tend to splatter my solid color where the color is that I'm using so same splatter in the same area of color okay and then I'm just going to take a hair dryer now and dry off this section okay so this section has been dried off a little bit and now I want to come in with a little bit more of a brown over that green so again I've got the sepia option or I can work with a brown so what I am going to do is I'm going to take the brown that I've got in my palette. I have a crow on the roof of the area that I'm painting. So you may hear it bopping around and running around. So I'm just taking a little bit of the brown and I'm going to sort of almost outline around the feather itself. Straight into that brown. And again, just sort of using a, a pointed brush as I'm doing this. The 
it's not my neighbor mowing or chopping timber it's the birds at the moment that come in during a recording so all I'm doing is I'm outlining dropping in that color the paper's slightly wet and that's going to help me with that bottom end of that feather and make it start looking like a feather itself it's just through here outlining and dropping the color in now I'm just going to leave that end green so I just carefully come in and swoop your brown around and do the same around here and then to make it a little bit more interesting I'm just going to drop a little bit of water there to create some blooms and to let it all merge and then just back in with the green again I'm just going to use a different green now just a lighter shade almost like an apple green and pop that on each of the feathers slightly leaving a white edge like so and then with my water I'm just going to disperse it out a little bit and soften those edges and I almost want to blur them in to the top half back in with the brown and just intensify that area so I'll dry this off again so there's a few steps in these sections and we're doing in step by step in the sections themselves so that way um, the painting should come together hopefully with a little bit of luck so just drying this area off again um, you can naturally let it dry and start on the next step but I'm going to actually dry it off in this instance now I want to go a bit darker again with the brown so I'm still working on this feathered area here so again in with the brown straight in just placing it to start defining some of the values and getting a little bit more intensity just this area underneath this feather almost casting a darker shadow under there and then softening it by just using a clean brush and dragging that color down shaking my brush a little bit and that's fine just to move that pigment down and then back in with the green just going in with the original dark green that I was using and just creating some line work and then using my brush again clean brush drag out that color and up so you're creating these little feathers there's three components down here just a little bit more brown to edge this off a little bit more of the original green down the bottom and just flick it off the end okay now I'm going to start in with the back end of the tail which is basically a black um, I don't like using straight black but in this instance I'm just going to use the black straight out of the palette and we are preserving white so this next step is about just using um, your brush with a little bit of control and all I'm doing is outlining outlining in black keep within the lines in my blacks normally I'll mix in a blue or a red so this bit 
is more about control and using the tip of your brush to get the results that you want. If you're not confident doing this with your brush, you can do a different version of it as such by just using a micron pen or some sort of um, permanent pen marker. If using your brush, you're not sort of very confident with that just yet. Just in an angle for me, that's what's comfortable. And because I'm recording, I'm also standing up. Normally I'm sitting down when I'm painting. Just bringing those strokes up. Like so. Move your paper around to make it comfortable for you. Just the last one in there. Just working around that splatter because I quite like it. And then just a little bit of wet brush work to join those feathers together. And then just at the back here, we've got a little bit of black. So I'm just going to pop that in straight away. Again, we're painting this in sections. So normally may not tackle it this way, but this is the way we're doing it for this particular painting. Just straight in with the black behind the orange. Remembering to keep the other areas white. So a little bit of control involved in this. like so. You can add more black as it dries to make it a little bit more intense. You can pop in some blue if you want to. Just joining these guys up. And then that's that section done. Then I'm going to come in and start working on the head. Now this purp it's more of a, like a purpley browny color so I'm going to come straight in. This is going to dry and because I'm working on this section here and turning my paper it's not going to affect this area. Just the size 6 again. Clean water. Drag your brush down and around. Now when you do use darker colors you'll find that your water will become muddy quicker even if you are using two jugs of water so be mindful of that so i've dropped that in and i'm going in a brown straight away dropping that in like so and i'm also going to drop in some purple more of a violet not as intense you just start dropping that and I want that to intermingle with my brown straight away so let it all mix in with the paper on the paper itself And in with a little bit more brown is where you get to play around and let it sort of merge and mingle. And I'm just going to flick out these areas where the feathers are. And preserving some of those areas in white, which is important also. So at the moment, all we're doing is we're mixing in the brown and the purple together. There is a stronger purple within the set the Mikador set itself and you can use that one as well if you like. It's a richer purple and I'm just going to drop that in. Be 
because the bottom area is quite dark so merging just that purple and the brown together and let them do their thing on the paper and when it dries you will have um, some blooms and the mixing you will see has created some really nice patterns so in we go with that I'm just adding just keep adding going in with a darker brown now and dropping that in just using that color that's on the paper and I'm going to actually drop in a little bit of water and let it create a couple of um, blooms and drop in a little bit more brown so the color will be intense quite quickly and I'm going to follow that through now and this bit is a little bit tricky I'm going to use a little bit of the darker blue color in the palette it's almost like an indigo blue I'm going to turn the paper around and I'm going to use that to outline just this bit of the head and I want to bring that blue into the brown like so and that's going to start darkening up things making that brown even darker but it's also going to create some interesting patterns within the paper and that's what I want at the moment and just with my brush clean brush just dragging up the top like so now in with the brown again and use any brown sepia etc I'm going to move that around the big area here and connect it with that blue that I've used and then I'm going to start bringing that color down and around leaving the beak as is dipping into the purple and making my way down with this really strong intense purple that's mixing with the brown working my way around so I'm interchanging brown and purple in this chest region and this is where these feathers are going to start popping out a little bit more and I did place a few X's on my paper just to guide me to where the darkest colors are so I don't get confused as I'm painting so at the moment in this chest region I'm using a blue so you can use an indigo a brown and a purple and I'm just intermingling those colors and you can do so yourself and starting to outline some of the other feathers that we've popped in earlier and we use that really nice lighter sepia color drop in a little bit of that dark blue again to really make those values go darker but still look browny blue and I'm not going all the way just yet just drop that color through because down at the bottom of that we're going to do some feather work to make it look interesting so in with the brown again all we're doing is outlining now using the tip of our brush if you've got too much water on your brush or too much paint on your brush just dab it out again for points of interest just popping in a little bit of water there and then I'm going to work my way through and just in the middle of these Mikador palettes you've got this little well and all I'm going to do is I'm going to mix in a little bit of this brown and a little bit of that indigo blue so I create quite a dark value like a purpley blue and I'm going to use that for the fine feather work and it's not extremely fine all I'm doing is 
flicking up the colour like so. Just drawing in some lines so it gives the illusion that there are some feathers there. Some lines. And then making my way down. There are three panels almost, three feather panels, and I'll paint in one. And I'll leave a couple of lines there, and then I'll paint in the next section, creating the illusion of feathers. And I'm going to work that color straight up there. So, just areas that I'm seeing that I want to work a little bit more, I'm just flicking upwards. You know, with that really, really strong colour. It's a really beautiful purpley brown colour. I'm just popping that in. In the outline that is already drawn for you, follow those lines through. Papers dry and then follow that color in between those feathers to make that other feather pop. So we're getting some detail in, and again, we're working in sections so that you can actually assess each section as you're going, and you don't have to sort of um, worry that you're going to ruin the painting just take one section at a time as you paint and all I want to do here is I want to flick out some feathers so just with my brush and tip with that dark value just flicking outwards like so and flicking downwards and then just popping in some shapes a few to help us with that illusion of feather work and again flipping up draw down some sections if you need to I'm just going to add in a little section here and flip down that section there so just the illusion a few lines um, in a watercolor painting do make a difference now as that dries, I'm going to now pop in this really dark value here, which is a black, but I'm going to add the indigo again. So I'm going to take the original black that I was using and use the middle tray with my blue. Pop in that indigo value, but also more black. You've got that color mixed up now, so it'll be really useful for the darker values within the bird. I'm just going to work on that top section, which is black. Again, just control here, that's all it is, on dry paper. Just using the belly of the brush as I push down, so tip, belly down. And doing the same thing here and working working it all the way up and a really nice fine point here and bringing that down like so again there's another darker area so I'm going to work on that straight away and that is leaving this area white and then coming down with a darker value. So this is the darker area. And I'm just roughly slotting in that. So it's a, like a rough feather. Wetting my brush just a little bit. Add more um, blue or black as you're painting if you feel it's not doing what it should be doing. And then just swooping upwards. You might need to swoop downwards depending on your brush control. 
And the good thing about a black blue, it just says a lot when you're painting something. It just gives you this automatic intense feel to your painting. Even though a lot of people say don't use it. Now this is still drying, so because it's drying, I don't want to stop, I want to keep going. So we're going to add in a li little bit more of that sepia brown. And I want to flip and mingle it out here. So I go a little bit lighter. And I also want to do the same thing now as this area has dried and bring in some feather work. So all I'm doing is flipping up some of the edges like so. And I'm going to go in nice and dark now in this section here. Just layering. A lot of people question the intensity of their colors. Sometimes the intensity of their colors are great. It's just that they haven't layered those colors. So the more you layer, the more intense your colors will be. And it'll define your painting as well. So that's drying off now. I'm probably going to put in a little bit more of this sepia brown color and work my way through there. Ultimately, you can just paint this bottom bit brown if you want to, or you can put in a little bit of work and make it a little bit more arty. I'm just going to use that blue black now and really come in dark down here. Like so. Now that's all drying again. I feel like I want to intensify the color that I've got in this area. So just in with the black purpley color, and we're really going to intensify it in here by using that black blue straight across. I feel just like it needs a bit of a kick. One layer isn't enough. But you can just add elements. As you can see, I'm just adding little sections, not going over the entire bit, letting the brush sort of touch some of the paper and lay down some of the color. Again, just a little bit. Just pop a little bit in there, like so. Alrighty, so we've tackled this area. This is still drying. I'm going to let that dry. And I want to flick out a little bit of feather work here. So while I've got that bluey, black, purpley color that I've mixed up, I'm just going to flick out those feathers. You want them to be dark and blend in with that dark value that you've already used. So it does look like it's part of the original colors that you've chosen. Just popping all that in. Like so. Now I'm going to start working in here, which is just the darker bits to make these other feathers pop out. Now in order for that to happen, I want to want to finish just working around the eye area here so a little bit of the sepia and I'm going to mix in just a little bit of that really bright orange that's on the palette and as you can see I'll just show you my water it's almost black so in with some clean water So that my colors don't muddy up too much in with that orange orange and sepia mixing that in and I'm going to drag that color so I'm going to start flat around the eye with a little bit of water and then I just want to drag that color take some of that color off your brush clean brush remember we're keeping an area almost white 
and intensify that with a little bit of brown down the bottom. And then we can start bringing in the point of interest with these feathers, okay? So just with your brush, you're almost outlining some sections and you're bringing that in. So all I'm doing is literally outlining with a really nice dark value. You can mix in browns, blues, whatever's going to give you a really nice dark value without it just being black. That bluey purple that we've been using is pretty cool. I'm just working my way through bringing up some of the colour to make these other feathers stand out a little bit more. But up the top, it's almost like a white, so I want to keep some areas white as well. It's just the way the feathers are moving around. So you're flicking your brush out a little bit. Now, to, inf to intensify some of that colour, straight in with, with a little bit of orange, just a tiny bit, and I'm just using that orange down the bottom of each feather. That'll intermingle with the darker colour and that's fine. So all I'm doing here is almost creating a a shadowed area and texturizing these feathers. Alrighty, I'm going to move on to the green area. So just I'm going to come in with a really nice strong green to start off with and move that in there. So it's just this little area here that will be a really vibrant green for now. And then I want to come in with a darker green. Underneath. And here I don't mind if these colours mingle and merge. It's not going to bother me very much. This is a really nice emeraldy colour, straight in nice and dark. And drop that in. And I'm going to take a little bit of yellow now. And I'm going to drop that in on the end feathers, which will take this and make it more of a limey green. Now pick up any of the colour that seems to be getting a little bit dark if you need to and then in with the green again over the yellow like so. Just that back area here and paint that green. I'm leaving just some areas that are not as um, dark and I'm leaving some white areas as well. I'm just going even darker with this emerald green of this feather. Like so. And then I want to come in with that dark emerald green again just above the back. So here I'm just playing with colours. dropping them in to the already wet paper. There's a little bit of brown on my brush now. I want to drag in that and let that sort of bleed in, that back feather. And while I've got the brown on my brush, I'm just going to flick out some of this here and texturize it. 
Okay. Now, the blues are strong in the Mikador palette. This is taking one of the more vibrant ones, and this is where it's just going to go pop. And I'm going to start painting in these feathers. With a clean, damp brush, I'm just going to pull out that blue now. It's just a little bit lighter. And I'll do that again. I'll come in with a little bit of blue is darker clean brush on its side and just pull out that color you're teasing out the color basically it's coming in with the lighter lighter blue it's already on my brush so I'm just using the blue that's already on my brush and moving that around like so So it's rather segmented at the moment. And with the emerald again, darken up the value down here. So straight in with that emerald, and bringing up that feather. I'm going to let that dry now. And go on to the next section. I'll just move that out a little bit. So the next section that I'm going to focus on is the feet and get them done. So they're more of an orangey browny colour. So straight in with the orange, I'm not going to focus too much on perfection here. And I'm basically going to do one layer of this orange, like so. Follow that through. And do the same thing here where its feet are like so and I'll let that dry and then I'll come in with another layer okay so I've dried off that surface a little bit and now I can come in and just work on the feet it's just with a yellow going to come in now and just go over that initial orange wash and again just over there like so I'm just going to also add in a little bit more of that yellow into the feather work. Just to lift it a bit and bring it up a bit. Now, normally I would take some time in doing the feather work. I just want to keep it nice and simple. Again, with the yellow, just around the eye now. I'm just going to draw some of that colour around. And just use a clean brush just around the eye and down that feather work there. Okay, now back in with the emerald green, so a darker green. Find a darker green on your palette. And this is where I'm just going to come in. And shape some of my feathers Just come in and give it a bit more depth as such and then in with the initial blue that we used I'm going to take the indigo and just outline the feather in some blue again I'm leaving some areas white which is just underneath this blue bit here so emerald and blue 
just mixing that through and creating these feathers. Really light wash of emerald just from the top. Just want to intermingle that down like so. Using that green again, just mixing through down here. Sort of olivey colours is what we're after. really don't mind if these colors merge down here just to create some interest and dropping that in so you can drop any greens in here and we're really just here we're just looking for a little bit of interest and just underneath that black I'm just going to outline it with a slight gap So you can paint over the black a little bit too because we use straight black blue there. In with the blue, just a lighter blue and I really just want it to merge and mingle. Dropping it in on dry and just letting these colours merge and mingle through. And being mindful of leaving the white areas that need to be left white the little puzzle pieces. Okay. Now the beak is almost an orangey red. The Mikadal colour red is very, very vibrant. And I'm just going to pop that in now. And my candle next door here is making quite a wick noise. It's almost squealing as I'm taping this. Okay, so just straight red onto my paper and the tip is white so we'll just outline that and bring that red in this is quite a staining red just dropping in a colour just pushing it towards the eye region because I want it to be a little bit darker there so there's just a little bit more value in there and to get that darker you can add a little bit of blue a darker blue just down the bottom and let that flow in so again that indigo I just want it to drizzle into that red, but not too much. Like so. Just dragging that blue through. Now, this is nearly done, but this is where you get to kind of put, pop in the details that you want to pop in. So at the moment, what I want to do is I want to create this crest a little bit darker so I'm going to come in with my indigo blue and just paint over the top section here and then I really want this section to be darker so all I'm doing is adding texture now with the blue over the brown like so Now, to create the belly and to make it white, all I'm going to do is, there is a grey here in the Mikador set, I'm going to use that and drag some of the colour down. But as I'm doing that, it's going to pick up some of the other colours perhaps and reactivate them. I'm okay with that. So down with that grey, just outlining. It's picked up some of that colour and it's sort of moving it and mingling it around. Up 
up and around following through any shadows that I can see just moving that through okay and then around the eye area you can use a marker or you can use paint um, just a permanent marker Mikador also make a very permanent marker which I am going to show you now it's just a permanent permanent pen stay anywhere permanent pen you can use that and I'll just use that now just to show you that you can just come in remember to leave a couple of little dots for the eye area and that's done you didn't really need a steady hand to finish that bit off so this is still drying I'm going to now add in some areas that need a little bit more layering so in with the orange again and I'm just going down to the feet and I'm going to intensify the color down in the legs so just the top rims as such like so and then in between the feet it's a little bit webbed so in with the purple this is the violet that's in the Mikador set and I'm just going to use it on an angle just get that webbed foot in a little bit darker on the ends and using the clean water to drag that out and again do the same at the top like so because the feet are webbed I'm just pushing through that purple like so let that sit for a little bit Now to make this a little bit more interesting, this is where I'm going to come in and just layer a little bit more. You can choose to stop here or keep going. Now I'm coming in with a lighter orange and I'm just going to roughly drop that orange in. And then I'm going to come in with that yellow and just work, work on bringing a little bit of, of spunk back into that area it's just this is a lighter yellow than I originally used just moving that slightly over and filling in any areas that I've missed with my brush and I feel that I don't want it to be white and I'm going to come in now with the yellow so this is the lighter yellow and just splatter a little bit in that area again to create a little bit more texture and then come in with the sepia now for a little bit of detail so this bit was always going to be darker probably even a darker brown might work a little bit better here and then just to pop in a few lines because this area of the wing has got some stuff going on it's quite a busy area I might even pop a little bit more blue down there to almost dirty the color up a little bit so these are the final final points now with the same blue I'm going to outline down here like so it needs a few lines so just a little bit of line work I'm just in with a darker color as well just to help it out a bit okay so I'm going to now just work in a little bit more of that blue I finished off doing a, a little bit of line work there you can pop in a little bit more 
um, and it won't hurt because it's just a little bit darker here so just outlining that blue and I really want it to sort of bleed in so I'm just going to flick out some areas here and sort of jiggle in some lines it's wet so you really want to work on some fine lines here so I'm just using the tip but you don't want to overdo it just use a bit of water and I'm going to disperse that blue out a little bit cold pressed paper it seems to almost um, the colors almost sticks to the paper straight away and budging isn't really an option so again just bringing in that blue now and this is the fun bit you've done all the hard work now this is also a, an area of your painting that you can actually overwork it but it's totally up to you how you want to do it now at the end of this feather area it is white so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let that orange drag out a little bit just a tiny little bit and loosen that area up bring in some of the color so all I'm doing now is adding water and there's just a little area here that needs to be black so I'm just going to pop that in I'm just using the blacky blue and again with that blacky blue there's this feather work down here I just want to make it a little bit darker I'm just adding another layer through just a little bit of the blue as a hint so I've tried to keep the steps really simple and the shapes really simple for you and again I just want to make some of these areas a little bit darker so I will come in with a little bit more emerald and then I want to actually just work in some of the feathers so just whip my brush a little bit so that the paint will move better and all I'm doing now is just picking out the color a little bit and popping in some deeper darker values still using the greens that we've used but just giving it a little bit more life a little bit more dimension so just that emerald green and I'm going to use that just underneath some of these areas just to intensify the feathers a little bit darker here like so just with the water again I want to soften up this edge so I'm just going to use the brush with a little bit of water soften that up let it merge and mingle out a little bit that's fine A little bit of points of interest now just a little bit of blue in here just dropping it in and just intensify any of those colors these feathers in this middle area shouldn't really have too much white so I'm just going to backfill that with a little bit of color and I really do want it to sort of merge and mingle so now if there's any areas that you kind of painted over and you do want to make look a little bit more white you can come in with um, the bleed proof white and I can do that just to show you guys how to use it again in with the orange now and I just want to add in a little bit more and I'm going to do a little bit of a, a flick upwards and again as you can see I'm still using that same color around the tail area and I want to bring in a little bit of shadow now underneath the feet so I'm going to use that bluey blacky gray color that I had mixed I'm going to take it down the bottom like so find some of that shadowed area there and here and then just to make it a little bit more interesting 
going to dose up on that colour down the bottom, which is the shadow. And then just use my bigger brush that I did show in the first area. Just drag that down. So just picking up that colour with a little bit of water. I just want it to drag down. Just drag it down. Now as I use a little bit more colour, let's see what happens. So just a little bit more colour in there. Just let it merge down to create some some interest. Just use that water to drag it down. If you don't like what you're creating, just grab some paper towel because the water um, should be holding that paint away from what you're doing and you can just dab it off. And to bring in that point of interest, just a little bit of that indigo again. And I'm just going to give it a bit of a splatter. It's a bit more watered down. And the bits that I don't want to be sort of as splattered, I'm just adding some bits to it, dabbing it off like so. Now as that dries, I'll come in and redefine that area just a little bit. That's what I'm going to do now, just with the orange again, redefining the foot. coming in with that script brush now. So then what we've used before now it just becomes almost like a background to what we're doing. Just a little bit of yellow now just for the tips of the claws. Now I'll let that dry and we will reassess whether we want to put in um, any more details or flick any more paint around. I think um, the beak here we haven't done so we'll just come back to that and I'm just going to drag out a little bit of that red to finish that off. Dry that off and then we'll reassess. Okay so I've dried this off a little bit and reassessed how I want to finish it off. And I really do feel like I want to take a little bit of orange and really drip the orange down from the foot. So I'll just start it off with a blob of orange. And then I'm just going to tilt the paper up and bring in some water to help coerce the orange to move down and slide for me. I do quite like a, a drip in, in most of my paintings if I can. So just letting that travel down. And when you're happy where it is, just bring it back up. Again, if you want to add in a few more splashes and splashes. And I personally just want to work a little bit more on intensifying the depth underneath the foot of shadow. Around some of these areas. So I'm just using the, the blue to darken some of the values. drawing out that colour again, with a bit of the purple, 
Work through. Remember to leave a few highlights. And I just really want to work on the feet. A lot of the times the feet are kind of lost in a painting. So I really think it's important to focus on them just a little bit as well. And this is such a bright duck. What I'm doing is just cleaning water now. dots across all the T's a little bit more blue now a bit of shadow like so just adding these little shadowy bits Okay, now just to finish this off, I'm going to use a little bit of bleed proof white just so that you know um, that you can um, come back and widen some of the areas that perhaps you know you've gone a little bit dark on, etc. So um, I've got the bleed proof white here um, and I just use it straight out of the jar and I'm going to use the size 6 on it. And all I really want to do is just focus on highlighting some of the areas and just the bits where I feel like it, they could have been a little bit more whiter than what they are. So in with the white, I just want to come in with the white here and just create some highlights in this feather work. Just nice little lines, like so. And then around the eye, I just want to round off a little bit of that and take away a little bit of that yellow, like so. And I want to just add in a little bit more white or more defined white as such, just through here. So it's a nice clean white line. Just out through here and spout some feather. And just at the end of the tail, just to create that wispy look, I'm just going to bring in some of this bleed um, proof white. Again, you can use it in any of your feather area that you feel like you know you want to just add a little bit of white I personally want to use it around the neck area so I'm going to just come in and on the darker points which I'm not really happy with I'm just going to highlight it highlight some of the areas which will give it more texture again if you feel that you've done something a little bit dark or just want to highlight it a little bit just plopping in some white to make it stand out more just around the chest area and bring in those feathers like so you don't need too much but just enough to pop in some highlights that may have been lost as you were painting. So I'll do the same here, just through these feathers, like so. And give them back a little bit of life. Again, that could have been lost while you were painting. And then often, um, you can also use the bleed proof white to splatter a little bit white over your painting. So I'm going to do that now in this section here. 
Let's just make it into a more watery consistency and just drop, drop some of that white through. Just finish it up through here. Clean up any edges. And when you're scanning these, and if you scan any of your artwork, the white will come up white. Like so. And you won't have any dirty colours or anything like that. It just helps you tidy up the painting. Like so. Any bits of the feet that you want to highlight, you can just add in a little bit of white in there as well. And there you have it. I'm going to call this done. Again, you can keep on going, keep on flicking and adding more to it, less to it. Drip some more if you want to. Just add it a little bit more white onto that orange. It's a nice contrast. And maybe just a, a bigger splotch in there, like so. Take this in sections. Paint it in sections. It'll be a lot less... Um, overwhelming and daunting for you. Um, concentrate on your brush control and then later on when you've got all your colours set down then work on your different tones and um, making the layers more rich as you progress. So Mikador colours here, I've used a few of the brushes, the size 6, the size 20 and um, just a little bit of the script brush on this occasion. You can come in and play more with this and do finer details. I just wanted this to be a little bit looser. Um, again, add more drips if you want to. Um, less drips, it's totally up to you. I appreciate you guys coming along and following this tutorial. My name is Danny Till and I am a watercolour artist here in Australia and often um, I take the time out to do a tutorial here and there to help everyone out in the style that I paint in. So again, I appreciate um, you coming along and hopefully you'll come and join me for the next tutorial. If you like what I do and you want to see some more of what I do, a coffee donation would be appreciated, which is just simply a PayPal donation either either, and I'll um, pop a link down in the description box. Thank you again, and um, we'll see you next time um, for the next tutorial. Thank you.